Judgment in the matter of Commissioners for His Majesty's Revenue and Customs against the NHS Logan Health Board. Lady Rose will explain the court's judgment. This appeal concerns historic claims to recover input VAT. That is to say, claims made by a taxpayer registered for VAT to recover now VAT that it paid on supplies it bought in for its business many years ago and which it did not, for whatever reason, claim back as it could have done at the time. In particular, this appeal concerns how the tribunal should approach such a claim when the taxpayer is not able to produce the usual documents that businesses generally rely on to show how much input VAT they paid. This is because it has lost or destroyed them in the intervening years. NHS Lothian, the respondent, is one of a number of Scottish NHS boards. It is seeking to recover VAT input tax it paid to its suppliers between 1974 and 1997 on supplies it bought in to enable it to carry out the work of its laboratories. The laboratory's main work was providing clinical services to NHS Lothian's own hospitals and clinics. This work was a non-business activity, and so input VAT was not recoverable on it. However, in addition to this work, the laboratories also provided private services to external bodies. This external private work did constitute a business activity for VAT purposes, so that NHS Lothian should have charged VAT to those customers and accounted to HMRC for that VAT. This means that any VAT input tax incurred in the performance of that work was recoverable and could have been deducted by NHS Lothian from the VAT it had to pay to HMRC each quarter. NHS Lothian did not deduct that VAT at the time because that was not the government's policy then. But it is entitled to do so now if it can show how much input tax it paid over those years. I will refer to the years 1974 to 1997 as the claim period. NHS Lothian makes this claim under section 121 of the Finance Act 2008. That section opened up an opportunity for taxpayers to recover historic VAT subject to certain conditions. NHS Lothian accepts that it's only able to recover a portion of the VAT it paid on supplies for its labs business, that proportion being the proportion of the work that was business activity for private clients rather than its work for NHS hospitals and clinics. NHS Lothian does not have a full set of VAT records for the claim period. This means that it could not quantify either its exact VAT claim or demonstrate the split between the laboratory's business activity and non-business activity work. So in order to calculate its claim, NHS Lothian took the percentage of its activity that was business activity for the year 2006 to 2007, and then it used this as a baseline figure for the earlier claim period years, assuming that the same split applied in the years covered by the claim period. The taxable percentage of overall work for the laboratories carried out in 2006 to 2007, which was business activity, was 14.7%. So that was the figure that NHS Lothian used to work out the amount of recoverable input tax for the claim period, subject to some adjustments for particular years. HMRC, the appellant, rejected NHS Lothian's claim. Its reasons for rejecting the claim were various, but the one relevant to this appeal was broadly that the method NHS Lothian used to quantify the claim was insufficiently precise. NHS Lothian had not provided a satisfactory basis to show that it was reasonable to assume that the percentage split between business and non-business activity in 2006-2007 was also broadly correct for the years in the claim period. NHS Lothian appealed to the first tier tax tribunal against HMRC's rejection of its claim. 
the first tier tribunal heard evidence from people who had worked at the labs over the claim period and also from the accountant who had worked out the 14.7 figure for 2006-2007. The FTT dismissed the appeal, finding that the evidence NHS Lothian relied on was too vague to be reliable. There were no primary data, such as account information, recording the relevant work carried out by the labs. NHS Lothian's witnesses were not really able to say how much work they had done which counted as business activity for this purpose. The tribunal judge found that the evidence did not justify applying that 14.7 figure to the claim period. There was nothing to say that the split had been the same over the earlier years. NHS Lothian had therefore not established what proportion of the lab's work had been business activity over the claim period, and it needed to do that in order to make good its claim. NHS Lothian appealed to the upper tribunal, which dismissed the appeal. They upheld the FDT's conclusion that there was no sufficiently precise or satisfactory quantification for the input tax claim for the claim period. NHS Lothian then appealed to the Court of Session in Scotland, the Inner House. That court allowed the appeal, and HMRC now appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court unanimously allows HMRC's appeal. I will address each of HMRC's four grounds of appeal and the corresponding reasoning of the Inner House in turn. However, before I do so, it's necessary first to address the Inner House's description of the factual findings in this case. The Supreme Court finds that the Inner House misinterpreted a key aspect of the First Tier Tribunal's factual findings. The Inner House thought that the FTT had found as a fact that NHS Lothian's balance of business to non-business activity was essentially the same over the claim period. In the Supreme Court's view, however, the First Tier Tribunal did find that the kinds of work done were the same over the period. For example, testing swimming pool water or ice cream for bacteria. But the judge did not find that the proportion of NHS Lothian's business to non-business activity was the same. In fact, the FTT said the evidence it had heard did not adequately establish whether the proportion of business and non-business activity had changed over the claim period, nor did it show whether this proportion had changed in the 10 years between the end of the claim period in 1997 and the 2006-2007 year from which the 14.7% figure was derived. The first ground of appeal concerns whether the inner house erred in its approach to the standard of proof in historical VAT input claims. In particular, HMRC argued that the inner house erred in drawing a distinction between the establishment of the right to deduct at least some input tax and the quantification of the exact amount it was entitled to claim. The Supreme Court finds that this criticism is well founded. The taxpayer's obligation is to prove how much it is entitled to claim not merely that it must have incurred some input tax in the course of carrying on its historic business activity. So the taxpayer must present either the usual documents showing the amount of input tax incurred or use some credible alternative method by which that amount of input tax can be estimated by HMRC with reasonable certainty. The Supreme Court holds that the proof of a more or less precise amount of input tax incurred is a precondition to the right to deduct any amount. There is no separate and distinct theoretical right to deduct input tax. The second issue was whether the inner house was wrong in its application of the European Union law principle of effectiveness. The EU principle of effectiveness prohibits national laws which make claims based on directly effective EU law virtually impossible or excessively difficult to enforce. 
the Supreme Court holds that the Inner House's judgment extends the principle of effectiveness beyond what is actually required under EU law. The principle of effectiveness does not require HMRC, tribunals or the courts to set aside their ordinary procedural rules to help taxpayers like NHS Lothian. It was these ordinary procedural rules that were applied to NHS Lothian's claim. The standard of proof applied was the ordinary balance of probabilities. The onus of proof is clearly on the taxpayer. This was the case for NHS Lothian, as it is in all historic VAT claims. There were no unusual procedural rules applied in the present case that created some impermissible hurdle. And once the tribunal or court had rejected NHS Lothian's 14.7 figure as unjustified, the principle of effectiveness does not require the tribunal or court to attempt to calculate its own alternative figure. The court's role is not to act as a forensic accountant, and the principle of effectiveness does not require this. Therefore, the Supreme Court holds that there was nothing in the approach of HMRC or the reasoning of the first tier tribunal that made NHS Lothian's claim for historic input tax virtually impossible or excessively difficult, and so nothing that infringed, infringed the principle of effectiveness. The third issue is related to state fault, namely whether the inner house was right to rely on factors which they said meant that the state or government was to blame for NHS Lothian not claiming it, the input tax at the correct time, or that HMRC was partly responsible for the difficulties that NHS Lothian faced in proving its claim. The Supreme Court examines the different ways the inner house decided that the government had been at fault and contributed to the difficulties facing NHS Lothian but the court holds that none of them is relevant or established on the evidence. The Supreme Court therefore unanimously allows the appeal. The court is now adjourned.